When Bubble was first announced, there was a lot of hype around it. The PV they released from Wit Studio looked absolutely incredible. Characters parkouring and flying all over the place. It was literally Attack on Bubbles. It looked like Attack on Titan meets parkour meets bubbles. But you also had a lot of big names behind it, not just with Studio. Jinro Ibuchi was doing the writing for it. You had Suwano Hiroyuki doing the music for it. A lot of really big hype that was behind it. But did it live up to those expectations? That's the big question mark. And the thing I'm going to get into with this review of Bubble, a series that is currently streaming on Netflix. I will also be doing a spoiler filled discussion about the ending at the very end of this video. So if you've watched it already, you want to check that out. You can skip forward. I'll have timestamps in it. But let's just jump right into it. Bubble opens up in a current time just like our own, but five years prior, a weird phenomenon happened. All these bubbles started dropping from the sky. And then after a while, they all started kind of forming around Tokyo until this explosion happens in Tokyo and a bubble encloses it. And while the bubbles stop appearing elsewhere around the world, they continue to drop within this bubble surrounding Tokyo. And obviously because of this, all the residents decide to leave and abandon Tokyo while researchers come in and try to figure out what is this phenomenon? Well, unfortunately, never really having much success. Well, during this five year period, a lot of orphans, children without parents, a lot of them that lost their parents during this entire phenomenon decide to actually move into this bubble. And it kind of turns into this parkour playground where all these children survive within this bubble. And one pastime they decided to create is Battlecore, where they all basically compete five versus five to a flag to see who can capture it first. And a lot of our focus goes on Hibiki and the Battlecore team that he's a part of, who are all living on this boat that's housing a researcher that's currently looking into this phenomenon. And Hibiki is very unique in the fact that he knows how to manipulate the bubbles that are in the area. They show one kid try to basically bounce off of one of them to take a shortcut, and he fails miserably while Hibiki Hibiki is almost able to gracefully jump and bounce off of these bubbles, which kind of gives him an advantage. And it seems like it's somehow connected with his hearing. He always wears these earphones to kind of block out sound. Whenever he takes them off, it almost seems like everything is super amplified. He has a heightened sense of hearing almost to his detriment. But when it comes to these bubbles, it seems like it helps him. And this transfers as later on after this match, he ends up hearing this song coming from the tower where the explosion happened in Tokyo. He's heard the sounds before, but this one night, he's drawn to it and he goes there. Well, because this tower is still kind of engulfed in almost like a black hole and the gravity around it shifts so much, Hibiki ends up falling and nearly drowning in the water below where he's saved by what seems like a girl that's turned from bubbles. <laughs> that takes care of him and pulls him to safety. Well, this girl is interesting in a way because it's almost like she doesn't know how to communicate. She's very weird. She's very, she's almost like an animal. She doesn't really know anything. She's very much so curious about everything. They, I think they describe him at some point as like a bunny. She's kind of running everywhere and jumping around, but she's really good at parkour as well. So they end up accepting her into the team and making her a part of their battle core team. And again, over time, learning about this girl that they end up naming Uta. So my thoughts on Bubble, let's, let's get it out of the way. This movie looks incredible. It visually looks gorgeous. The colors pop, the visuals pop, the animation is amazing. Again, it's very much so similar to like the early Attack on Titan scenes where you have all these great shots where characters are running through environments and it's constantly shifting around. They're jumping over stuff. The parkour animation is absolutely amazing. They, it obviously seems like they're using some sort of CGI environmenting in order to make it work, but everything just works together. The CGI itself does not stand out much. It visually, it, it, it just all visually comes together so beautiful. And then, like I said, having very luscious colors, the bubbles themselves, the, the spectacle, the colors in the hair and everything, it looks gorgeous. This show it, it, alone, if you, if you don't care about the story, if you don't care about anything, you don't care about the characters alone, you can enjoy this show based purely on just the animation spectacle, just the the great pacing of the action scenes as well. It, it seemed like they kept a constant pace of action scenes with these characters parkouring and jumping around buildings. It just looked gorgeous. And then you have so I want to hear Yuki's music being injected into it as well, which takes it to a whole nother level. I never shy away from saying how much I adore so I want to hear Yuki's music. And I always love, especially when the animators and the studio can use it properly, when they can interweave his music to really ramp up those key points. And I think they did it incredibly here. Visually, music, everything, gorgeous. And I love a lot of the character designs as well. I, I think Uta looked fantastic. I thought she was way cute. Uh, they had a lot of fun with Makoto, the, the, the researcher. They loved keeping the shots on her. But I love the character designs. I think they were all fantastic. So 
outside of the visual spectacle, which I think is really, really good to have in a movie. Let's be honest. If you want to watch a movie, it, having great action scenes is phenomenal. I mean, there's a lot of movies out there that can probably be carried on that alone. Outside of that, the story. I wasn't really sold on this story early on. Honestly, I thought that the, the start of it was pretty weak. It was just a bunch of kids parkouring, battle parkour, shrug. I mean, it, nothing there is really grabbing me. Uh, even when they introduced Uta, I thought that she was a goofball. I loved watching them kind of trying to keep her under wraps because obviously again she's she's trying to figure out things and she doesn't know how to talk and she's just a mystery she's obviously like a blank slate person it it kind of indicates what it seems like she might possibly be really early on but i think it wasn't until the later segments where you start seeing the uh, the progression of hibiki as a main character who is yes very standoffish because he does have this amplified hearing he doesn't like to be around people he kind of secludes himself and he always keeps himself in his headset because it hurts him to hear people. People are too loud. Sounds are too loud. It's best to keep to himself. But he's unique in the idea that he was a really good parkour person. And yes, he had this advantage that nobody else had. But when Uta's introduced, it sort of adds this element that she's going to constantly be around him and force him to interact. And he slowly changes over time because of that. And I did like that progression. And they try to introduce some side characters, like there's the Mortician group, which are kind of doing the battle core stuff from Prophet. But it doesn't really ramp up until we get to the later segments where we start to get into, and I would probably put here very soft spoilers. I think it's pretty obvious from the very beginning, so I don't think it's too much of a shock here. There's a lot of emphasis on the Little Mermaid. Really quickly, Uta starts to really look into the world itself. She's trying to figure out more about this world and one such book that she runs into is Little Mermaid. And it starts to draw a lot of comparisons here. Obviously, the first meeting that Hibiki has with Uta very early on, he thinks that she's a mermaid because of how she comes to him. And so she immediately gravitates towards that story. She thinks that Hibiki is her prince. And I did actually like how they ma basically made an anime version of <laughs> Little Mermaid. <laughs> Let's just say that. Now, I think the thing that a lot of people are going to be very mixed on with this movie is the ending. I'm not going to spoil it, but what I will say is that it essentially implies what's going on. It doesn't outright say. It doesn't have this big narration. It doesn't have a scientist come forward and say, this is what's happening. It basically shows a lot of things that unfold but it never specifically tells you what actually happened. And I think a lot of people are gonna hate or like that because I think whenever an ending has a very vague ending that lets the viewer interpret it, if you don't like the movie, you're going to think it's just plot holes. If you like the movie, you're going to think it's trying to let the viewer interpret it and that's cool. And I, that's why I think that there's gonna be a big, huge divide there is because I think a lot of people have a lot of expectations from movies to tell some big, crazy, mind-bending story when they only have an hour and a half to work with. But I think it did a really incredible job of it. I actually liked it. It was a cool, vague ending that I have drawn my own conclusion and I would love to talk to other people about what they drew their conclusions on, what the ending means, what the overall story is essentially trying to tell. But at face value, when you're not speculating on a lot of that stuff, it's really just like I said before, it's going to be a romance story about kids trying to just have fun and enjoy their time in some random bubble of a place with a sort of Little Mermaid story kind of mixed in there. A little bit of a romance of what could be and what can't be. So in the end, yes, I really enjoy this movie. Like I said before, I think the earlier segment was kind of blah, but I think the actions and the music and the visuals are going to keep you entertained for a little bit. And the story itself kind of starts ramping up later on. Like, I think that the second half of the story, it starts to really kind of pick up. So if you're looking for that story, that's going to be that later end. It's going to be back-ended quite a bit, with a lot of the beginning section kind of being the lead-up. And like I said before, visually and music alone, it's enjoyable. Like, even if you don't care about the story, you're still going to get an entertaining show here. And again, technically, visually and music alone, it's incredible. So I think even if you don't care for the story, you're still going to get some entertainment out of this. So I definitely recommend it. It's not going to be for everybody. And like I said, don't expect too much early on. Just really go into it just to be entertained. I think you'll find a really intriguing story kind of mixed in there as well. But anyway, that's my review of Bubble. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like down below. Comment. Let me know what's thought of the movie. If you liked it or not. Or if you're going to be checking it out, definitely let me know. Additionally, if you've not already, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I do reviews, news, first impressions top list discussions. If it's anime, it's pretty much here. Additionally, if you want to support us more, we have a Patreon link and a tips link in the description below. We definitely appreciate everybody that supports us and y'all take care.
Now with the review out of the way, full on spoilers from this point on, like I said before, you could probably get a very general sense of what the story is going for. Like I said, it's technically an anime version of Little Mermaid story. You have the the girl from the bubble area that comes to the human world, it falls in love with the prince, but then is being pulled back by the evil stepsister <laughs> back to her world. They cannot coexist. If she stays away too long, she'll become a human or whatever. That story, I think it was actually the more darker version of Little Mermaid, not the Disney version of it, but you get the same idea here. And again, I think that's the big reason why a lot of people will probably be a little mad at this movie. They'll think, eh, it's just Little Mermaid. That's not a great story. It's just copying that story. But underneath there was a deeper story that I'm actually very intrigued by. And it's actually something that I'm interested to see if they will actually do a sequel for this movie. I don't think it will. I think this is probably just a one shot. They did show a little bit of an after story at the very end of it, which indicates that Uta is still with Hibiki. Gives a cute little ending to it. But it, I don't know that it is set up to have legs going forward. I, I think honestly, if... With anything, if you have enough attention to something, they're going to do something else. But I do think there's a sprinkled understory here that I was actually intrigued by. I think the moment where they first started talking about Hibiki's history, the moment that it showed him reaching out to the window when he was a child and seeing and hearing this singing and drawing this bubble in, which was obviously Uta. All the bubbles appeared in the world. They were all just there existing. And the moment that Hibiki heard Uta singing, she came to him and it caused the disaster. Now, when I first seen that, my mind immediately went to, okay, this is an alien force that has come to Earth and they're just existing there. They're not doing anything. They have, spe they're, they're special in a way, but they're not doing anything. It wasn't until one of, which typically comes from alien sources. Whenever you're dealing with alien stories, a lot of it centers around hive mind. Everything is a hive mind. It all works together for the hive. And the moment one of them, Uta, goes to Hibiki, it broke away from the hive and it caused the disaster because something shifted from the hive mind, the hive mind broke and it caused the disaster. It, it caused the explosions and that's what caused it to create the bubble to kind of isolate itself. Something's wrong, isolate. That's what I was getting from it. Something broke within the hive. Now, the thing that was kind of throwing a little bit of a wrench into that theory that I had was later on, it has Uta confront a sister. And it started to kind of play it out as if this sister was jealous that Uta left her and went to Hibiki. It, she left her sister. The idea that this bubble left the sister bubble and the sister bubble got angry and blew everything up. Now, I, I, I was about to throw my theory away the moment that that happened. I'm like, okay, so this is literally just Little Mermaid. But my mind started traveling a little bit more. And I love doing this because I know some people are like, you're overthinking it, you're overthinking it. But I do think I want to give the writers credit for at least creating a little bit of vagueness that can intrigue and that can that people can draw conclusions on. And like I said earlier with my review, sometimes people can see that as plot holes. Some people see that as just being lazy. But I think if you're enjoying the story, you'll probably see it more as the artist allowing the viewer to draw their own conclusions, to speculate on it. And what crazy theory that I was coming up with was that my original thought of Uta breaking away from the hive mind causing the explosion might still be correct. That if you think the only reason that Uta confronts a sister is because she's creating the Little Mermaid story. The only reason there was a sister there for Uta to plead to was because the hive itself is starting to play out the story. Uta became what she thought Hibiki would identify. She became the poster girl. She became somebody else in order to be a human to interact with Hibiki. And then she learned about the Little Mermaid story and she started to play that out in her mind. Hibiki's my prince and the evil stepsister wants me to come back. And then the hive mind itself, when conflicted with Uta, started to play it out as well. It started to draw those same conclusions that it needs to play itself out in order to communicate to Uta that it will be the evil stepsister. So again, my theory still is con concrete. The entirety of the bubble alien force became the Little Mermaid story. It's not that it is the mermaid story. It's not as if the whole story is the mermaid story. It's just that they became familiar with the story and thus identified with it and in a sense played the part. So it's not as if there is a sister bubble. It's just that the bubble itself the hive mind, the core of it, in interacting with Uta, became what Uta found out about the Little Mermaid. 
And so that's where I get to that whole idea that if you think about it further, it gets a little more interesting, which makes me terrified that Uta would have ran into a different story. <laughs> like, I'm glad Uta, of all stories, read The Little Mermaid because I can't even imagine what other crazy story. She, I mean, she could have thought she could have been read Game of Thrones. And then suddenly we have the red wedding in <laughs> the bubbles. That's my thought process there is that the bubbles themselves as a hive mind wasn't really wanting to interact. It didn't seem like it was interacting, but it wasn't until one of them broke away that it started to, again, it isolated itself, but then it started to get manipulated by what was inside of it. And that was through Uta. Uta connected to Hibiki, connected to the story, and then the hive itself became the story. And that's the thing that I'm curious about if they can do further stories, get into more of the bubbles and actually answer those questions and really kind of dive into something else, maybe an external threat that can involve the bubbles. But then again, that's only if it was intended to be that deep. I don't want them to go into bubbles too, just to try to force some extra story. But if there was something else behind there that they can get into in the future, I'm welcoming it. Because again, if you think about it beyond the Little Mermaid story, you can find something here that can actually have legs and I'm actually interested to see what that does so that's my crazy theories and explanations of the ending of bubble again why I enjoyed it so much is, is theorizing on that stuff so I hope that that either clarified for some people or gave you something to think about I guess for for other people but yeah with all that said I hope you all enjoy this and you all take care